Hey YouTube, thanks for tuning in. So today we're going to take a look at the basic and level one steps for the prepping plan that I laid out in the previous video. Um, I laid out a framework that consisted of a basic level and then seven, seven additional levels all the way up to uh, a homesteading, self-sustaining uh, capabilities. So today we're going to look at the basic level and level one. I'm lumping those two together because they're very similar and a lot of the aspects roll right into each other. Uh, level two has a lot of similarities as well, but I'm going to cover that in its own video. So for the basic level and level one, the basic level is three days of food and water with a shelter in place concept, no real defense plan, and some basic first aid. The shelter in place concept assumes that your residence is, has not been threatened or destroyed by any kind of natural disaster or whatever it is that's impacting you that would require you to uh, initiate a three-day survival mode. Uh, the same concept applies to the, the level one plan. Seven days of food and water, shelter in place concept, no real defensive plan, and basic first aid. So both of those incorporate the same shelter in place concept. Your, re your residence is still intact, that's where you're going to be. Um, you've got your, your regular food and water that's there, you've got all your blankets and stuff to keep you warm or whatever. Uh, so that's, that's the concept, your shelter in place, no real defensive strategy. Um, basic first aid. So let's go over to the food and water really quick. Um, this right here is all you need for three days. Okay, we're done. Great video. See you later, guys. Just kidding. This is uh, more of a novelty item, but uh, I've heard a lot of people talk about these, so I wanted to put it in the video. Uh, this is, you can find these on Amazon, uh, places like Cheaper Than Dirt, before I started uh, boycotting them. Uh, stuff like that you can find these there let's take a really quick look and see what's inside this and then I'll give you some more information all right so Spanish on one side English on the other just in case you don't know which language you are so all right let's take a quick look inside well actually it tells you right here but I'll open it up anyways it's food individually packed uh, contains all the essential vitamins and minerals Plus it tastes like a cookie. Uh, I don't know about that. Water, six individual sealed tight bags of fresh drinking water and a blanket. This is just your basic Mylar blanket. So let's open it up take a quick look. So these are your drinking water packets. I don't know if you can see. Let's see, where does it say? Uh, Four point two two five ounces per bag. See, and this says use four per person per day, but there's only six in here, and this is supposed to last you three days. So even according to their standards, they didn't pack this thing right. So that's the water. This is the food bar. This is by a company called Mayday, and this particular pack has 2400 calories over the course of three days so that's 800 calories a day and then there's your little emergency survival blanket so that's what's in this kit and like I said before this is kind of a novelty um, I, I would not rely on something like this to sustain you for three days now if this is all you had and you're sheltering in place not moving around, not burning a ton of calories, not exerting and, 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 and straining yourself to the point where you need a lot of water. This Something like this would probably let you survive for three days. But that's going to be painful survival. This stuff, people aren't used to eating these kind of food bars. It's going to do a lot of stuff to your digestive system. Uh, it's, it's only eight ounces of water a day. That's not really a lot. So if you had one of these per person, that's, that's a start, but I would not rely on this. Now you can supplement it. Uh, these things you can find on Amazon. This is where I got these. This is by Mainstay Emergency Food Rations. This is 3,600 calories in this pack. Uh, so that's pretty decent. Uh, if you 
split that over three days, it's 1,200 calories. It's still not quite enough, but it's better than the 2,400 calories or 800 calories per day. These are also really good for um, survival kits, get home bags, uh, emergency car kits, those type of, type of things. So this is one that I got off of Amazon as well. And they make, there's tons of different brands out there. There's Daytrex. They're all pretty much the same type of bar, um, but they just come different packages and stuff like that. So this is also 3,600 calories. And you can also buy both pouches of water as well. This is, it's four ounces, 4.227 fluid ounces. Uh, you can get 64 packs of these these pouches for about 20 to 24 dollars. I think it maybe it's 28 dollars. I don't remember the exact price. But that's you know 64 pouches times four ounces each. You can do the math. That's not a whole lot of water, um, and that's an expensive way of buying it. So you can get some of these types of things as some basic emergency survival supplies. But there's a lot better ways of doing that to get you your three to seven days. Like I said, these are great for for kits like flyaway kits, bug out kits, uh, home or car survival kits, those types of things. But if you're in your house, there's better ways of doing it. So let's take a look at some of those uh, those better ways. All right. So like I said before, these little survival kits they're they're kind of a novelty. I don't I wouldn't put much stock in in the, its ability to sustain you uh, for some sort of emergency kit maybe. But if you're doing a, a shelter in place. Uh, three days of food and water, seven days of food and water for the level one. There's a lot better ways of doing that, so I'm going to show you those right now. Um, actually, before I get into that, let me just want to apologize if you hear any ambient uh, little screams or noises. I have some kids that are running around the house, and I'm in the basement, and you hear every little movement they make down here. So uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, so here's some basic food items. Um, roast beef and gravy, Hormel chili with no beans, chicken breast packed in water, tuna, beef stew, chicken and dumplings, some whole kernel sweet corn, peanut butter, corned beef and hash, this premium ham fully cooked. All these things uh, are foods that, that my family eat on a regular basis. Not necessarily these brands, but you know, we, we make recipes, we uh, our meals they incorporate these types of foods uh, on a frequent basis. So this is stuff that we normally eat. Uh, all the, these are these brands, the the Hormel, the Dinty Moore, a lot of these stuff were kind of bottom shelf items. They're not the, the premium middle shelf things they put at eye level to make you buy that cost a lot of money. Um, and when we were looking at collecting these things, we looked at the expiration dates on them. I don't know if the camera's going to be able to pick this up. Uh, it's not going to. So I'll just read it. Um, October 20th, 2014. When we bought this, this was uh, December of 2012 when we started stock when I, we really started doing the food preparation part of prepping, um, so it wasn't too long ago. Uh, we, we started checking in the expiration dates of everything, and a lot of the, the eye-level foods that you find in the grocery stores, their expiration dates are not as not as long shelf life as, as the bottom shelf things. I'm not quite sure why. But um, as far as nutritional value, it's pretty much the same as everything else. So a lot of these things all have a two-year shelf life. Um, the stuff that had one year shelf lives we kind of avoided as best we could um, because we wanted to have something that would would last uh, a couple years now at about the 18 month mark we rotate all this food into our pantry and restock with fresh stuff with new newer expiration dates so you've always got a good two year shelf life of these kind of foods on hand and this is not included in your normal pantry items. This is stuff that you should store away specifically for the purpose of a uh, survival situation where you need food to sustain you for three days to a week, seven days. And just use use foods like this that, that are everyday foods. You know, there's, there's a pack of ramen back here. This stuff is dirt cheap. Um, coffee in the number 10 can. Don't get the plastic ones or the, the cardboard cans. Try to get the number 10 cans if you can. Um, these I'll talk about in some future videos. This is some freeze-dried stuff. So all this stuff though is, is foods, like I said, that my family normally eats. Um, that way you're not, you know, trying to guess as to what people are going to eat and whatnot. Just get the foods that you normally eat. Set them, set some aside, buy some, a little bit at a time. Uh, you could probably go and get three days worth of food for each member of your family uh, for 20 to 30 bucks buying these types of items. 
and uh, all of this stuff it's important to note that all of this stuff is fully cooked so you could open any of these cans and eat it straight out of the can now cold food is not going to taste as good or not as appealing as as hot food but in a situation where your grid down your powers out you've got no way of heating stuff up if you didn't plan for that which we'll get into some of that in another video but uh, if you didn't plan to heat stuff up you can eat this stuff straight out of the can and it will sustain you it'll provide you the nourishment you need uh, or if you do have the ability to heat all this stuff is in tins so you could get a little Coleman stove or whatever put this right on there and heat this right up in the can and then eat it straight out of the can or serve it however you want to serve it um, but always make sure to have a can opener because these aren't pop tops so have a couple can openers as a safeguard and when you if you heat this up directly over an open flame like a little Coleman stove or whatever make sure you puncture the top to let steam out otherwise the can's going to explode so this is for three days for seven days of food preparation all of these things to your shelf life normal foods that you eat you don't have to get these exact same ones get the foods that you eat but don't rely on what's in your pantry you want this to be your food storage store the food away and don't use it until the expiration date rotation time six months before it expires rotate it into your normal food stuff go to the store buy all new stuff to put down in your storage thing and that way you've kept it kept it cycled and, and it stays fresh now if you for some reason don't do that and it happens to go past the expiration date if it smells okay if it looks okay if it tastes okay then it's probably okay heat it up as best you can typically the expiration dates mean that the nutritional content is good until that expiration date after that expiration date it starts losing its nutritional value it doesn't necessarily mean it starts rotting and it's gone bad it just doesn't meet these nutritional standards anymore so if it smells good if it looks good and if it tastes okay then you're probably okay but this is a really easy way of buying some stuff and putting it away that'll give you some good shelf life two years um, and easy to do for three to seven days now let's take a look at the water most people can buy a case of water for three bucks at the cheapest um, I tend to spend a little bit more I usually spend four or five dollars on a case and the reason why is because I buy the cases that have the cardboard base on them the cheaper ones are usually just the bottles that are wrapped in this plastic thing and they don't stack as well but these ones with the cardboard base they stack better so I spend a little extra money and I get the ones with the cardboard base and this is probably going to be your easiest way for water to store water for a three to seven day period the basic level and the level one to provide water for your family now the rule of thumb is one gallon of water per person per day and that provides water for drinking for sanitization and for cooking so sanitization is washing your hands and washing other parts um, and the cooking if you have stuff like this the mountain house freeze-dried stuff then you have to have water to cook this stuff to, to um, rehydrate it now all of this food right here none of this requires any kind of water to prepare so if you have a lot of this stuff then you could probably tone back the water a little bit and, and I don't necessarily recommend it but here's my my logic behind that a case of water is 24 bottles each bottle is about 20 ounces and there's 128 ounces in a gallon so if you need a gallon per person per day you could for four people get one case of water and that would last you a day with five bottles per person that's 120 ounces per person per day using a single case now if you have five people you could still use the single case and just go down to four bottles per person now that covers five people for a day now that only gets you the 100 ounces or uh, yeah 100 ounces of water but per person but if you're sheltering a place you're not burning as many calories you're not using up the water in your body so something like that would probably be good to get you by it wouldn't even probably be good it would be okay to get you by it doesn't meet the minimum of a gallon but because of your circumstances you're not going long term you're just going three days to a seven day period so 
you could do a case of water per person per day. So if you have five people in your family, you could get away with seven cases of water to last you through an entire week. Now, like the food storage, this is not relying on any water storage that you have in your house. And what I mean by that is most homes have a 50 gallon water heater in them. That's 50 gallons of water that you have stored in your house. Now, assuming that your water table has not been contaminated and bad water has flowed into that hot water heater, you could tap through that water heater and pull out that 50 gallons to survive on. If you fill up a bathtub, you could also use that. Bathtubs hold 100 gallons or so. So if you have the foresight to see something coming, you could fill up two bathtubs in your house, or if you only have one bathtub, and then you've got your water heater. Now, for both the food and the water, you want to deplete your home resources first before you get into your survival kit. This will extend the amount of time that you have. Most people have three days of food in their, home, in their house. And if you include the water heater, then you've definitely got three days of water in your house. So if you get to the point where you're in a survival situation for a three to seven day period, deplete your home resources first. Get all of the, the food out of your refrigerator, cook it, prepare it, eat that, consume that, and get those refrigerators emptied because that food will spoil. So eat that stuff first. Eat your pantry items first. Go through all that food first. Go through the water heater, the bathtubs, if you've stored water there, use all that water first. And the reason why is because at the end of that time period, whether it's a three day or a seven day period, if it comes to the point where you have to bug out, this stuff, if you've stored it properly, could be taken and easily stuck into a vehicle and then you bug out with it and then you've been able to, to save these supplies and take them with you. Same with the water. The cases of water are fairly easy to transport if you have a vehicle to transport them with. In the next video, I will show you a couple storage options for some totes uh, that, I've, that I've found that are pretty handy for storing this kind of stuff. I keep a lot of my, my stuff in these types of file cabinets that I have behind me. Um, it makes it easy for rotation and whatnot. But there's also some great options to put the to dump it all into some storage totes, and that way they're easily transportable to a vehicle and can get them out in the house and, and bug out and go. So three days of water for the basic food and water for the basic concept, and then for the level one is seven days of food and water. This type of, of food storage is more than adequate to cover those basic levels. And this is all from the grocery store. You don't have to go to any kind of specialty survival store or anything like that to grab those kind of things. So for a fairly decent cost-effective approach of doing it this these kind of food options is ideal this kind of water options for cases of water is ideal and then once you get into the higher levels you get into the big math more big uh, large storage options uh, and, and rain catchment type systems and stuff like that and we'll talk about those in some subsequent videos um, one other point that I wanted to uh, highlight about the food when we bought these we bought the smaller cans for the, the beans and stuff like that. And I think I might have one here. Let me take a look. Yeah. This is spaghetti sauce. And this is a, a big number 10 can. Now if you open this, you have a limited amount of time for this to stay fresh before it goes bad. So if you have a community plan where you've organized your neighbors and you have regular preparedness meetings, which I highly recommend, um, then you've probably uh, establish some sort of plan to do some sort of community meals which is a great idea get your neighbors involved they should all be prepping too even if it's just food prepping if you're not if you're not a gunner and you don't you don't want firearms or whatever then at least take care of your basic survival of food and water so something like this you open up these big cans and you, you have to use it within a certain time period or it's going to go bad so if you have if you've organized your community then you can plan community meals where you all get together and you use these kind of big cans and go through this whole thing in one sitting with all your community and, and you each have stockpiled a few of these so that you each can do that so that it's not relying on one person to stock these kind of things but for the individual family you want to focus more on um, you want to focus more on the smaller size. Mm -hmm. Now they're still pretty cost effective. The, the the price difference, you're going to get a better deal in the bigger cans, but you're still not going to you're not going to spend a whole lot more money on the smaller cans. And the smaller cans allow you to open them and go through the can to feed your family and not have to worry about storing anything to use at another meal. If you have those big cans and you open it and it's just your family, then you have to worry about food spoilage and storing that food and trying to keep preserve it enough to be able to use it the next meal. Doing it like this, you open up this can, 
you feed everybody, you've probably gone through the whole can, you're good, you're done. You don't have to worry about storing any food. Same with, you know, this dinty more beef stew. That's that's a meal for four right there. Uh, chicken and dumplings, you know, this is the biggest can they made. This one actually is a pop top. But uh, you get a couple of these cans and then and you don't have to worry about opening a big number 10 can and having the, the food to go bad and stuff like that. So those are some great food options. This is this was my approach for getting um, I'm, I'm I have to go back through all my things to figure out how far along I am in my prepping plan uh, but I'm not I'm not super far along yet I'm still working on it and still developing this as I go but uh, this is how I started this was my concept easy to easy to get easy to achieve easy to purchase fairly low cost fairly long-term storage for like I said two years shelf life uh, same with the water um, so for your basic three to seven days, this is the concept. You're not worrying about your ability to filter. You're not worrying about your ability to uh, generate new food or anything like that. This is short term. You're, you're in your home. Uh, you're not being threatened. Society hasn't collapsed. So you don't have to worry about those kind of things yet. Once you get into the more longer term, the 14, 30 day, 90 day concepts, then you're starting to get to the point where people are panicking because the food is no longer available. Um, and, and so you have to protect what you have and that's when you get into the more defensive nature of things and whatnot so three days seven days of food three days seven days of water the last concept is first aid and this is really basic this is the basic level um, this is a little kit that I picked up from Walmart it's an 85 piece you can kind of see the, the stuff it's got in there it's got uh, antiseptic towels, alcohol wipes, cold compress, antibiotic ointment, uh, adhesive bandages, 15 of one size, 20 of another, adhesive tape, four 2x2 two two gauze, two 4x4 four four gauze, five butterfly closures, 10 cotton tip applicators, uh, four finger splints, two examination gloves, and one first aid guide. So this is, this is basic. This is, you know, like I said, you're not in the middle of, uh, your house wasn't torn down by a tornado. Uh, there's no injuries. This is just you've, you know, the resources are for whatever the disaster is, whether it's a hurricane or tornado or, or whatever, the services have stopped. Power's out, water's out, those kind of things. But you're safe in your home. Then something like this is probably going to be okay for you. It gives you some basic stuff. You might want to make sure you've got a couple bottles of some aspirin, some, some Advil, uh, anti-inflammatories, those types of things in case you sprain something or whatever. But, uh, this and I would recommend maybe one of these for each family, one of these for every vehicle, uh, one of these for every family member, and then one for every vehicle. Um, they're fairly inexpensive, Walmart special, uh, commercial off the shelf, very easy to put together, um, pretty compact, so not not a whole big massive box to big to transport around. So that's the first aid concept for the level one and the basic level. Three days, seven days. It's it's a basic first aid kit. There's nothing special about it. So that's a lot of rambling on for me. Your th three days, seven days, food and water, and the basic first aid concept. Like I said, this is a novelty item. Maybe put together a couple, you know, get home bags to put in your cars or something like that out of something like this. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't waste my time or money on something like that. Focus more on getting the food you eat every day. Just get extras. Check the expiration dates on them. See if you can find the stuff like these that have longer expirations of two years or so. Now this is 2015, December of 2015. So this is a three-year shelf life. So it's out there. It's uh, it's available at your local grocery store uh, with very little extra cost to you. So this this is this is where you start your food and water. You know all the extra things that go along with it: with water filtration, your ability to cook and start fires and and defend yourself and all that kind of stuff. For your basic emergency three-day survival and one-week survival you can kind of overlook those things to start off with just work on your food and water and then after you get to the seven days of food and water then go look and see if you can find a little Coleman stove or something just a little one that you can use to heat up some of these cans and stuff with and then as you expand your food and water capabilities then you expand your ability to prepare those foods and defend those foods and store those foods and all those things that go along with it so like I said in the main video the original video the prepping plan this is all a framework Stay within that framework. Focus on the essentials first, and then as you get the essentials, then you can kind of expand and acquire the additional resources that you need to 
not necessarily survive, but make the survival easier. So that's the basic level and the level one concept. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave your comments below. I'm very interested in hearing what you guys do and how you guys do it. And uh, please like, give me a like, and share the video, share, share the channel with people. I'm trying to get the, the word out and build the viewership and, and just get the information out there. So I appreciate any kind of sharing that you do with this kind of information. And um, that's about it, folks. I hope that you guys got a lot out of it. Thanks for watching. God bless our military service members, past and present. Keep your powder dry, folks.